Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 11. In this module, we are trying to study human being. We already have the proposal of human being as the coexistence of self and body, but now we are trying to rightly understand this coexistence of self and body through our direct observation. In the previous lecture, we talked about all the steps of exercise one. We already have been doing exercise one and going through multiple steps there. And what we did toward the end of the lecture in the previous one, we uh, talked about all the seven steps of exercise one, and that gives us clarity of how to observe the self by the self. Now in this lecture, we'll study the various steps of exercise two, and we'll see how the self can observe the body. We'll be doing these steps of exercise two further in the practice sessions. But in today's lecture, we'll summarize all the steps and then try to relate this observation to the discussion that we had so far. Now, if you look at exercise two, so we'll see that each one of us is doing this exercise for developing oneself. This is something that we said about exercise one also, and we need to develop the understanding. And also we need to purify the accumulated feelings and thoughts that is our accumulated sanskar. So we talked about exercise one, now we'll talk about exercise two. So exercise two is observing the self, the body, and the interaction between the self and the body in space. And of course, that observation has to be done by the self. So if you look at the steps of exercise two, so I am there, the body is there. I can see them by observing their activities. Now this is something that is step one. So I am there, the body is there. And how do I make out the activity of the body? And how do I make out that the body is there? By looking at the activity, isn't it? Second thing, I transact information with the body by giving instruction to the body and reading some sensation from the body. Now, what is happening between me and the body, if you see? So there is no material transaction taking place between me and the body. It is only an exchange of information that is taking place, isn't it? And how does that take place? So I give instruction to the body and I receive the sensation from the body. So the first thing is to be able to make out that, yes, I am there and the body is there. I am not the body. There are two realities, isn't it? Second thing is to observe the transaction between me and the body. And we can see that it is only in terms of information. There is no material transaction taking place here. The third thing is that I am the one who decides. So if I am giving some instruction to the body, I am the one who is deciding. If I'm receiving some sensation from the body, again, I am the one who decides. So I am the one who decides what instructions are to be passed on to the body and what sensations are to be read from the body. This is as per my decision. This is again something to be observed at a very subtle level that it's not that these things are happening automatically. Okay, I'm deciding. If you observe yourself, you might be changing your posture every two minutes. Now you may assume that this is happening automatically, but if you observe it uh, with some fineness, you can see that every time you are making a decision, isn't it? So you are giving instruction to the body. Similarly, there may be thousands of things in front of you, but you observe only few of them. So you are the one who has decided to pay attention. Maybe a friend of yours is coming to you and then you are observing the friend, but there is so much outside in addition to the friend and you are not paying attention to that. There may be a lot of traffic, a lot of people in the crowd, right? And you are not observing that. You are only paying attention to your friend. So you can see that it is again your decision to take a sensation from the body and also to pass on some instruction to the body. So I decide to transact, isn't it? From time to time as and when required. This is step three. In step four, what we're saying is that I can read the sensation taking place in any part of the body from where I am at a distance from the sensation. And there's a distance between the self and the body. So I'm the one who is reading the sensation and I am able to read the sensation in any part of the body from where I am. And every time you see that I'm at a distance from the sensation, so maybe there is a throbbing in the leg, there is some pulsation in the hand, and you are able to read that. So you are not the sensation. 
you are away from a sensation there's a distance between you and the sensation and you are able to read that sensation and going further you can observe that there's a distance between you and the body also so you and the body are located at the same place in space but you are not the body the body is not inside you you are there with the body and there is a distance between you and the body this is what we are saying in step 4 that there is a distance from the sensation and also we are saying that there is a distance between the self and the body but all these points i think you have to observe uh, one by one we may not be able to observe at the very outset and there is no need of assuming anything here because we are trying to observe the reality through direct observation now the fifth step is that my interaction with the body or the world outside is by way of sensation i give meaning to the sensation my reaction or response depends on my sanskar now how do i become aware of the body how do i become aware of the world outside through sensation is that true or not you hear something and you get aware of something happening there you see something through your eyes and then you become aware of hap something happening outside you smell something you get touch of something all these are sensations you taste something on your tongue all these are sensations and you can see that you are able to sense the body also through a sensation how do you know that the body is there you may have a look at your body or you may get some sensation from the body of some pain in the leg or something and then you are able to say that yes the body is there isn't it so my reaction with the body or the world outside is by way of sensation this is what we are saying here and i give meaning to the sensation every time i hear some sound okay let's say somebody is talking in a foreign language which i do not understand i hear that sound and i am not able to respond because i do not understand the meaning of that but if i have learned that language the same sound now has a meaning okay maybe somebody is saying hello in a foreign language i do not understand i do not uh, know the meaning of those words and hence i'm not able to respond but when i am able to make out that this person is saying hello to me in a different language and i know that language then i am able to respond so i give meaning to the sensation every time i'll see that my reaction or response also depends on my sanskar this is another thing that we are saying now the meaning that i'm associating with the sensation is guided or misguided by my sanskar what kind of meaning will i give to the sensation okay now the other person has said hello in a foreign language while he knows that i do not know that language but still he is using that language and you may assume that this person is trying to humiliate me by making me learn that i do not understand that particular language and then you may feel offended isn't it now you have associated a particular meaning to the words that he spoke and that depends on your own sanskar your own assumption now step 6 is in two parts in 6a what we are saying is that i tend to react if my sanskar is based on assumption so i decide my feeling which may be right or wrong become happy or unhappy based on the external inputs and then i react so if i am misguided through assumptions if i do not understand if i do not know the reality and i am uh, dictated by preconditioning or assumptions then i do react this is something that you can observe about yourself also does it happen with you or not don't you react so you become happy or unhappy because of these external inputs and reaction could be either in terms of happiness or unhappiness so somebody says something a praiseworthy word for you and then you become excited somebody may use some humiliating word for you and you become depressed or you feel angry you start reacting start shouting now what is all this happening even when you are getting excited it is not going to continue and when you feel angry that is also not going to continue and both are reactions so if your sanskar is based on understanding then you respond so here you respond if that understanding is guiding you here you react so there are two possibilities either you react or you respond now when you have the right understanding ensured in you so you continue to remain in harmony the feeling remains natural in accordance with the human nature 
you continue to be in a state of happiness and then you use the external input to rightly evaluate the external situation so if somebody is using a humiliating word for you and you are able to make out that this person is not at peace within oneself is not happy he must be perturbed must be anxious that's why he or she is using this kind of word then you evaluate the other and then you make a program accordingly with the other and this is a response isn't it now step 7 uh it made little time for you to observe what we're saying here that i observe my being in space <clears throat> so i am in coexistence in space the body is also in coexistence in space i am transacting the information with the body through space now this step 7 is a connecting link to exercise 3 we are not going to talk about exercise 3 in this whole course but here you can get an idea of what we are going to do in exercise 3 so in step 7 we are taking a shift so long we have been observing the transaction between the self and the body and we are trying to make out the basis on which we associate meaning to the sensation that we get from the body now here we are trying to observe the space also so you can observe that you are there in space the body is also there in space and you are in coexistence with the body being in space and you are transacting the information with the body through space now this step 7 is a step which is introduced with the idea that you start working on it so that you start getting a feel of it by the time say maybe a month or so now in step 7 we are taking a major shift so we are trying to observe the space also here so i have to observe my being in space and that is to say that i am in coexistence in space the body is also in coexistence being in space and i am transacting information with the body through space now if you look at the steps 1 to 6 in exercise 2 so far we have been trying to observe the body the transaction between the self and the body and we are trying to make out the basis on which you associate the meaning to the sensation that you get from the body and the way you react or respond okay but in step 7 we have taken a shift now we are talking about space also so this is step 7 is a step which is introduced with the idea that you start working on it so that you start getting a feel of it by the time we come to exercise 3 that is observing the coexistence by the self so it may take some time for you but at least you can be prepared you can be observant that yes space is also there and whatever i am doing whatever is happening in the body whatever transaction that i am doing with the body this is all there being in space so just start observing it do not try to conclude things in a hurry keep working on it keep observing these are the two exercises that we have taken up for this course so if you look at the content of these two lectures we have already started working on exercise 1 so if you look at the content of lecture 10 and 11 we have already started working on exercise 1 where we are trying to observe the self by the self in seven steps so this we are doing in the practice sessions the seven steps of exercises 1 and 2 already have been placed in brief to get a feel of what we are doing the detailed discussion and the practice is done in practice sessions which is being run along with the content delivery two lecture on content followed by one practice session this is something that we have been doing and by now we must have gone through four or five practice sessions covering three or four steps of exercise 1 and it must have given a feel of the clarity and confidence obtained out of direct observation so i have already discussed these steps with you and you must have started following these steps and i do suppose that if you go through these steps you develop a clarity within yourself about yourself about the body about your relationship about your feelings and that awareness about the feeling is very important this is something that we have been trying to do in exercise 1 as you go to exercise 2 will be able to observe the coexistence of self and body with more clarity so i hope you are doing that you are following the steps of exercise 1 and i think in the past few weeks you must have developed some more awareness about your feeling about your thought in fact being aware of the thoughts is not enough awareness about the feeling is very much important and this is the activity in the self from where the shifting starts taking place when you are able to be aware of the feeling then you are able to make out whether this feeling is acceptable to me naturally or not and if not then i have to work on that i have to transform my feeling and then you start 
understanding relationship, harmony and coexistence. So again, observe for yourself, find out for yourself. In step one, we are being aware of our imagination every moment. With some effort, we are able to see the imagination going on in the self. Further, we are able to see the desire, thought and expectation in the imagination by direct observation. So when you try to be aware of the imagination, you are able to see that there is a desire which is involved, thought which is involved, expectation which is involved. Desire essentially means something that you want to be, isn't it? What you want to be is your desire. Thought is how to make it happen, how to be what you want to be. That is your thought. And expectation is that let it happen, isn't it? Now, when you try to observe your imagination, you can see these three distinct activities in the self, the desire, thought, and expectation. We can see that whenever we pay attention, we find that the imagination is going on at that moment of time. So it can be deduced that it is going on every moment and it can be confirmed by observing the imagination every moment. So we have started this observation, but this has to continue in you, isn't it? You have to be observant, you have to uh, be aware. And I do suppose that uh, in the whole duration of this course, you try to be aware of your feeling, your thought, your imagination every moment, and that will be quite enriching for you. In step two, we are evaluating the feeling, the desire in our imagination at this moment. We are verifying whether it is natural or unnatural, whether it is naturally acceptable or not. And this verification is being done from block B1. So the block of knowing, isn't it? From there, I am trying to evaluate. From there, I am trying to observe, verify. In step three, we are evaluating whether this feeling, that is desire, are we in a state of harmony or disharmony, happiness or unhappiness? This gives us the feel that our happiness is related to harmony and harmony is related to our feeling. So in step three, we are able to see whether you are comfortable or not, whether you are in harmony or disharmony, happy or unhappy. And then you can get a feel that your happiness is related to harmony and the harmony is related to the feeling. We keep on saying this, that happiness is to be in a state of harmony, but to be able to see that happiness is a state of harmony, we can also see how this harmony is related to our feeling, because at the level of feeling, we might be feeling unhappy or happy. So that relation has to be understood. In step four, we are trying to find out who is deciding the feeling that I have uh, at this moment. The answer that we get is that ultimately it is me who is deciding, but again, I'll keep it open for you. You do not have to conclude at this point. But if you start asking this every moment, you are able to see that this is the, that it is you who is deciding. This gives us the clarity that ultimately I am responsible for my feelings, for my harmony and for my happiness. Or otherwise, if you see unhappiness, disharmony. In step five, we are able to see that if this feeling is based on right understanding, then it will definitely be a natural feeling and will lead to happiness. So this is something that we had said earlier, that if the feeling is based on right understanding, then it will definitely be a natural feeling and it will lead to happiness. So if you are able to conclude here that it is me who is deciding, then very naturally you get a decision that yes, I have to work on myself. Isn't it? I have to work for right understanding. So this confirms our proposal that right understanding and right feeling is the source of continuous happiness. Now we have said this already, but you have to come to this conclusion within you very naturally, isn't it? And for that only these steps are meant. Through these steps in exercise one, we are able to verify the proposals we made regarding the self in an experiential. So through these steps in exercise one, we are able to verify the proposals that we made regarding the self on experiential basis. So you are able to see directly, you are able to experience what has been proposed in the course. A similar thing was proposed in UHV 2 also, something that we are discussing in UHV 3 also. But the point is that whether I am able to observe this reality by myself, whether I am able to experience this, and this is very important. Otherwise, it, it only remains as an information for you and it also carries a doubt within you. So to clear all these doubts, to be able to see the reality, you need to go through these steps. And again, I'll say that these are not the only steps. Maybe you are able to 
add or subtract something to this but essentially we have to be aware of the reality you have to be aware of your natural acceptance you have to see the need to understand the reality similarly we are able to verify many proposals regarding interaction between self and body by direct observation through the seven steps of exercise 2 and this will keep discussing in lecture 11 as we go further so we have discussed exercise 1 and you have been doing exercise 1 also as we began with the course and here we have given you a complete glimpse of all the steps that are going to be involved in exercise 1 and exercise 2 and as we go along the steps will be much more clear so most of what we'll discuss about human being now is already there as a proposal but now we are going to verify them by direct observation and that will give us a better clarity and depth than what we could achieve through our own analysis or something at the level of thought so this is a major shift so if you just try to analyze the proposal at the level of thought it will not help you see the reality it will not help you gain understanding about the reality and that's why this direct observation is required isn't it mere analysis at the level of thought will not serve the purpose now going back to what we have discussed earlier in terms of knowledge of the human being so we can see that human being is coexistence of self and body now in exercises one and two we have been trying to directly observe the self the body and the transaction between the self and the body you could see that in step seven of exercise two we also try to look at space so the self is there in space the body is also there in space now reiterating what we have said earlier also you can see clearly the difference in the need the activity and the response of the self in the body and we can see that in the self is activity of knowing and assuming right which is not there with the body and recognizing here is every time based on assuming okay but there is no assuming here in the body now again going over what we have discussed earlier so there are four activities in the self knowing assuming recognizing and fulfilling knowing is to see the reality as it is as well as the purpose by direct observation and that is being the seer now in exercises one and two this is what we are trying to attempt isn't it so you get the clarity of what and why of relationship harmony and coexistence and there is definiteness here continuity here universality here so we are trying to develop the potential to see we are trying to utilize the potential to see by being a seer now when you have the seeing and showed in you when you are able to see relationship harmony and coexistence so you have the acceptance to live in accordance with that purpose and this acceptance can of course be there on the basis of knowing or without knowing but when you are becoming a seer when you are able to see the reality as it is you are of course working on the basis of knowing isn't it but that is not guaranteed uh, in the very beginning so you may attempt to see so long as you are not able to see the acceptances that is the assuming would be based on something without knowing now recognizing is recognizing the relationship with human being and the rest of nature fulfilling is again fulfilling the relationship with the human being and the rest of nature and here we are the doer and what is resulting ultimately happiness or unhappiness is being the experiencer or the enjoyer so as we had said earlier that if you are working only in the domain of assuming recognizing and fulfilling so you are misguided through preconditionings and the assuming is without knowing and then the assumptions keep on changing and the conduct is indefinite you are dependent on something outside for your happiness or unhappiness and you are basically partantra this is a hindi word to suggest that you are dictated by something from outside but if you are able to ensure the resolution within you then the knowing is there through self verification on the basis of natural acceptance and on the basis of living accordingly and then the assumptions are definite on the basis of knowing and now when we are able to ensure the resolution and that is to say that we are able to ensure the knowing through self verification and this verification takes place on the basis of natural acceptance and on the basis of living accordingly then our assumptions are definite because now they are based on knowing and then the conduct is also definite and the process to ensure this to take us from the domain of problem to resolution is what is education sanskar and that is the whole purpose of education isn't it going over it again human being is coexistence of self and body 
Self is the consciousness while the body is the material. Self is continuous while the body is temporary. Now, what we are saying here, it's not only the needs which are continuous, the activities which are continuous, the self is also continuous. The body is temporary, all of us know, right? But what is continuous, we, we need to observe through our direct observation, we need to find out. The body has only activities of recognizing and fulfilling, while the self has the activities of knowing, assuming, recognizing and fulfilling. So try to find it out for yourself. Try to observe this. Okay. Try to observe yourself different from the body. Try to observe the interaction between the self and the body. And this is something that we are going to do in exercises. This is just to make it out very clearly that this is something that we have to accomplish in this course. Once again. So try to try to explore this, try to verify this for yourself. So as a homework, we have this assignment for you. Observe yourself and your interaction with the body. Now check by direct observation whether there is need for happiness in the self. It is there every moment or only for few moments. Now you are able to say that, yes, I want to be happy every moment. But have you said this by direct observation or by your thought? Similarly, there is a need of physical facility like food for the body. It is there from time to time and not every moment. This is something temporary. So here in the self, it is continuous. With the body, it is temporary. Second one is that observe yourself and your body and now check by direct observation whether the recognition and fulfillment of the body is definite or not. And whether the recognition and fulfillment of the self is dependent on its assuming or knowing and assuming. So you have to find out whether there is some assumption in the body. Is there any activity of assuming in the body? or in the body only recognizing and fulfilling is taking place. You have to respond to this by direct observation and not by analysis. Similarly, in the self, you have to make out whether the, <clears throat> whether the recognizing and fulfilling is taking place on the basis of assuming. Now this assuming may or may not be guided by knowing, but there is always some assuming involved when you go to recognize. So whether you recognize the other person as your relative or opponent, the other thing as useful or useless. You will see that there is always some assuming involved here and that only guides your recognizing and fulfilling. Then thirdly, observation of activities of the self is made in detail in exercise one. It is found that they are continuous. So observe the activities of the body and verify that it is not continuous. So try to observe the activities of the body and try to see whether there is any activity which can be continuous, which is continuous or every activity of the body is temporary. For example, breathing, some example that I had taken earlier also. Now you inhale and exhale. Neither inhaling is continuous nor exhaling is continuous. If you look at the heartbeat, the heart is expanding and contracting. Neither expansion is continuous nor contraction is continuous. Now this is something that you have reasoned out. Now can you observe it directly for yourself? So this is as an assignment for you after this lecture. So in lecture 10 and 11, we try to understand the human being through direct observation. We went over the steps of exercises one and two. There were seven steps in exercise one where we try to observe the feeling, try to make out whether the feeling is naturally acceptable to me or not, whether I'm comfortable with the feeling or not, and what is the basis of this feeling after I have made out who is the decision maker. And then we went on to step seven where we try to ensure the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence and that every decision that I take is based on this feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence. In exercise two, we looked at the existence of the self and the body. We looked at the transaction that is taking place between the self and the body and we tried to make out that how this transaction is taking place, who is the decision maker in this transaction. And then we went on to see that Whatever uh, sensation I get from the body, I associate some meaning to it. Now, if the meaning is based on some assumption without knowing, then I react. But if the meaning is based on my knowing, then I respond. And ultimately, my reaction or response is dependent completely on me, not on the situation outside. And in step seven of exercise two, we also looked at space, the coexistence. 
and try to see how I am there in space, how the body is there in space and how I am transacting with the body being in space. So what we have essentially done in lecture 10 and 11. So something that we have been discussing earlier about the needs, the activities and the response of the self and the body, we try to understand the same thing through our direct observation by going through various steps of exercise one and two. So this is all for lecture 10 and 11. Thank you.